the first one here it's someone who's a little bit annoyed at you uh, about your your lack of fear of, of inflation and the lack of acknowledgement of just how bad it is. So I'll read the question. Don't you recognize that this inflation, even if you are right and inflation subsides, is one off a stealth tax on people's savings, leaving them poorer? Well, I understand. Thank you for the question. I understand perfectly that inflation is a hidden tax. It's a regressive tax. John Maynard Keynes said it in the 1920s, and um, I read Keynes at a young age, and uh, uh, I believed it ever since. And by the way, others have said it as well, including uh, uh, Lenin. Uh, so um, uh, yeah, inflation is a tax. It's uh, it's regressive in the sense that it hurts um, lower income people more than upper income people for two reasons. Number one, you, you have to um, at lower incomes you have to pay the inflation tax, which means you got to go buy stuff. Well, if you buy stuff and the price is up, you're paying the inflation tax. If you have a lot more wealth and more dis and more discretionary income, and a lot of your wealth, you're not you're not spending it every day. You spend a certain amount, not necessarily a lot more than lower income people, but you have a lot else in your portfolio. Well, there's a lot you can do to protect yourself. Uh, buying gold is an obvious one, but um, uh, you know, land, uh, fine art, uh, um, you know, things with with deferral, uh, converting ordinary income into capital gains. Um, th there are all kinds of things you can do. You're know, buying utility stocks, uh, uh, buying, uh, you know, th there are all kinds of things you can do to protect yourself from inflation that, that lower income people cannot do. So not only is it a tax, it's a regressive tax in the sense that it disproportionately affects lower income people. I understand that perfectly. I understood that for, you know, 50 years or more. Um, I didn't say it wasn't. What I did say, and I, it continues to be my view, is that the inflation that we're seeing now, and it's serious, it's real. I, I mean, I, I don't live in a bubble. I go to the gas station, I put petrol in my car, and I know it's $70 to fill up the tank. So I, I get it. Um, but as an analyst, I have to ask myself, is that going to persist or get worse? Which it might. I wouldn't rule that out. Or is it going to hurt the economy in such a way that we actually flip into a recession and it turns into disinflation. I lean to the latter view, but I would be the first to say there, there are two sides to that debate. Uh, and I think as an analyst, you have to present both sides. So, uh, so I have a view that the inflation will run its course and go down, uh, but I'm open to the uh, possibility that it could go up and I'm looking for that. That's, that's one of the things I do. But I would be the first one to say, yeah, it's a tax. Absolutely. But Jim, I've been reading in the American media that inflation is actually good for the poor and bad for the wealthy. Well, that's the American media that is a uh, fully sponsored mouthpiece of the White House. Um, yeah, that, that's two things. Number one, it is a little bit of uh, maybe more than a little bit of um, our legacy media being spokespeople for the Democratic Party and the White House, and what else would you expect them to say? But it's worse than that. I mean, that's bad enough. But uh, although I would advise people who are hearing that to watch Fox, I actually, I, when I travel abroad, I, you know, you get to your hotel or whatever, and you turn on the TV and see what's on. And anywhere in the world, you can get, um, you know, CNN or MSNBC or you know the major ABC, major American networks, and others. But a lot of countries ban Fox. I'm like, they're the only network telling the truth. They're the only network that really has good reporting and good analysis going on. That's the one I can't get. But uh, so watch the little Fox. But uh, but to answer the the question, uh, it's not just the bias. And that's been around for 50 years or longer. Uh, and it's not just the outright ideology, which is more recent, but that's prevalent. It's a good reflection of the elite bubble. Because uh, when they say it, they're not just lying to you and me. They actually believe it because they go to cocktail parties in Georgetown and everyone in the room thinks the same thing. So, uh, you know, and Jen Psaki, I, I, I have, I'm debating with myself is she, whether or not she's really a very well perfected Disney robot. I mean, I, I think she might be. Uh, we may be surprised, but, uh, but she's, the way she speaks precisely, clips her sentences, ends on a hard period. It's just like um, Alexa. Uh, and so I, uh, We'll find out, but but she says things like, uh, "Oh, you know, the tragedy of the treadmill." Meaning, uh, some well, your treadmill didn't get delivered on time because of the supply chain, and uh, uh, aren't you a victim? Well, um, 
you know, that's uh, who's buying treadmills at $2,000 a piece? Well, rich people. Uh, and maybe they are delayed because of the supply chain, but it shows how out of touch she is because it's not about treadmills. It's about milk, eggs, meat, groceries, butter, bread, gasoline. That's where the inflation is coming through. And by the way, when I mentioned the 7% inflation in the United States in 2021, we got the numbers in January. That's what it was. Um, but the, uh, the Bureau of Labor Statistics, which computes that, um, looks at 21, or sorry, 29 categories, different things. And, and every one of those categories has dozens or more of subcategories. So there are literally thousands of components in the so-called basket uh, that they use to compute inflation. And uh, so there's a degree distribution. It's, okay, the average was 7%, but averages don't tell you anything unless the components are clustered around the average, which they're not. Some of them are off the charts and some of them are even down a little bit. But when you look at the ones, the, the, the chart I saw was, was bar graphs for the column 29 items with bar graphs left to right for above and below. When you look at the things that went up a lot, they're all the things that people buy. It was, it was gasoline, it was new and used mm -hmm. automobiles, it was milk, eggs, butter, meat and poultry. Um, and uh, and some other items that are in the daily shopping list. And they say, well, what went down? Um, uh, electronics, well, okay, how often do you go out and buy a new computer? Once every two years, three years or whatever? Um, education, well, what if you're not in school? You know, notice there were a lot of, I'm not saying it doesn't count, it, it's in the basket, but there are a lot of things that people don't need, don't want, or just personally aren't shopping for. Uh, and those are the ones that were going down and all the ones that were going up, uh, the individual components, by the way, some of them were up 40%, 25%, 13% against the 7% average. And those are the things that people actually buy. So Jen Psaki, the White House, the, the legacy media, uh, the, uh, you know, the, uh, I can't think of all the names uh, of, of uh, the spokespeople for all these think tank, Jason Furman um, and others are completely out of touch. They're in the elite bubble. They're flying back and forth between Cambridge and Georgetown, and they, they don't know what everyday Americans are going through. I think, uh, I don't know if you realize, but I'm originally German. I follow the German media every day, and it was just hilarious to me to be reading in the German media about how inflation is terrible for the poor and everything you've just said, the fact that it's, it's food and, and basic necessities that are shooting up in price. That's right. all very clear to the, to the Germans and in the German media, the German mainstream media. The tabloids even talking about this a lot. And they're, they're pointing at the central bank's inaction as, as the blame. <laughs> and then you cross over to the American media and it's just a world right. of talk. 